call her Eco Heidi. I call her Grandma. Have you ever wondered where my grandma gets her amazing eco-ness from? Well, I got to find out firsthand. Where? The other day at lunch. Oh, that's right. We were drinking smoothies. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, ding, the eco light bulb went off. I was just looking at this and I thought, this would make a really cool bank. It's got the hole on top of it and it opens up so you can get your money out. So then I just started thinking and so this is what I made. This awesome eco-friendly piggy bank. How amazing is this? Isn't it cute? So from this to this, let me show you what I did. So here's my cup and here's my bubble lid. And the first thing we need to do is make sure it's clean and we're going to cover it. Now I have covered mine with paint, just acrylic paint, but that doesn't mean that you have to do that with yours. Use what you already have around the house. If you have fabric around the house, then you can cover it with fabric. If you're going to cover it with fabric, I suggest you use a, a spray. Tacky glue is really good. Spray the cup and then put your fabric on. Works really cool. But let me show you how I did my painting. I take a sponge, facial sponge or makeup sponge and I just start dabbing it on. Just dab, dab, dab all over it. And I do the whole, I do the whole cup up to the, up over the rim. And then I also do the, the bubble lid. I let it dry. And if you're in a, in a classroom where you want it to dry faster, just take a hair dryer and dry one coat and then apply a second coat because it always takes about two coats when you're using the sponge to put it on. So I'm going to set that aside because I already have one that's ready. Here's one that has two coats of the paint on it. Uh, next thing I want to do is to put a pattern on it. And I, I found this really cool sponge uh, material where it's really flat and when you put it in water it expands. Let me show you. So you can cut any shape that you want. This is just a square and then you can use it to to put on a pattern. So I've just got a square. Put a little bit more paint out. And you can just take the whole thing. Make sure you squeeze out all your excess water. And we're just going to go into it. And just start putting our pattern. And again, you don't have to do the exact design that I'm doing. Just have fun with it. Let the kids have fun with it. And you can leave it like that. Or you can also take a brush. And I like to I wanted to add another color to it, so I just took some blue and a fine line brush and I just really quickly went around each square like so. Now, also we want we don't want to forget to put the front of the frog on. So what you do is you put a piece of tracing paper and just trace around your pattern. And you just simply take your same sponge or facial sponge and go in that area. This is going to be the front of the frog. And be sure you cover up your tracing line. And Fill that in, all in, and now you're also going to probably need two coats of paint on this. It just depends what you like. If you like it where it's solid, 
then you need two coats. And then do all the rest of your little squares. Go up over the edge. And we're going to set that aside to dry, and I'll be right back. So I have my body all painted, and I trimmed all the uh, sponge squares. And next thing I want to do, I'm going to kind of put this aside because it still needs a little bit of drawing. Next thing I'm going to do is make the eyes. And you need two plastic lids from water bottles. And I have glued them together, let them dry, and then you paint them. And again, it's the same kind of painting, just um, sponge on your paint. And then you're going to add some black flat marbles. We're going to glue them on. Let me get that out. I'm going to just open it up and I'm going to get some out with a toothpick. Sometimes this um, thick Aline's glue is hard to squeeze out of the container. It works really good. Dries quick. We're going to put those flat marbles right there for our eyeballs. We're going to set those aside to dry. Next we're going to put on some of the craft foam. I've got the craft foam feet and the hands and I wanted to show you a little secret on cutting in for like the um, fingers. If you can see that I drew on just lightly in pencil my fingers and I punched the inside. That makes it where when I go to cut I don't I only have to do the outside cut and not the inside because I paper punched with my paper punch, I punch the craft foam. And also on craft foam, you really do need a really good pair of scissors. And just cut that. Cut that. And there I have my fingers. I'm going to trim that a little bit more. But it makes it easier where you don't have to cut in if you use that paper punch. So we have it at each end. We're going to put a spot of glue right in the back. Put the center of the hands right there. Bring them around to the front. And put a little bit of glue on the hands on the front and put them where you want. And then we're going to have to hold that just for a second to get that to hold. And I'm putting on my legs now. Make sure you've got them going the right direction right before you put your glue on. Now we're ready to put the mouth on. And I usually have a template that I make out of shrink plastic and I just put it on and I just take a pencil just lightly and this is where I want my mouth. And maybe I want to draw it on with, with like a Sharpie pen or I want to put on my, I have a small strip of craft foam that I've cut for the mouth. And that will give me a line of where I want to put it. A little bit more glue under there. And if you want the tongue to stick out, you're going to put a little hole 
right below and stick that craft foam tongue right into that hole. Push it in till you get it where you want. And you might even put a little bit of glue underneath. Now I found in my studio this cool bug. So I'm going to glue the bug onto the tongue. And I also have these little wooden hearts that I thought would be cute to put in his hands. And then as a final, you're going to put your, your eyes are already dry, so you're going to put your um, eyeballs on the top. Now, when you're using a thick tacky glue like this and you want it to hold, and it's kind of a hard to hold place, let it set out a little bit and you put a little bit more, let me tilt this up a little bit more, put a little bit on this where you're going to put it and then on the eyeballs and set it into place. Remember the um, tacky glue dries clear and you are all set. Your hole is up here to put your money in. Your cap when everything's dry comes off. The perfect eco project for kids or make one yourself. Now that was awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for showing us this awesome new Eco Piggy Bank. So basically, you never throw away anything. Pretty much not. You've seen my studio. It's <laughs> full of awesome, amazing, eco-friendly ideas. Well, I love thank it. Thank you. You're welcome. So always remember to stay eco and always recycle. Not only that, but be sure that you recycle creatively. I'm Savannah Starr. And I'm Eco Heidi Borchers. And back to you, Aunt Tiffany.